Those Down Crow started with me, Ronnie. Me and Ronnie been in bands for 20 years nearly. It's a long time when you think about it. <laughs> We've been in loads of bands in the past. Uh, got to a point in our career um, where just things weren't working out. So kind of took a break, which we didn't want to do. We didn't want to kind of find new members again. Um, there's just so many highs and so many lows being in a band. We just got sick of the generic shit you hear on telly every time you turn it on. I said, like, you know, I run this, this, this do a rock and roll band later. I mean, the way it should be done. Shiner went out and bought recording gear. He'd send over an idea. He'd sit with it for a couple of days. Lay down a couple of couple of bits of drums here and there. Next thing you know, songs started coming together. So you know, fast forward on, um, we found we had like three or four songs. Then three or four songs turned into five or six. So I think we got up to like, all in all, is probably almost thirty songs maybe. So then we've almost had to narrow it down to like twelve. It was like. This is happening, you know, this is starting to feel right. Um, should we start to look for members? I met Lloyd in the tattoo studio I own now, and in walks this blonde bombshell of... He's just crazy. I wanted to get my first tattoo, and I didn't know nothing about many, like, tattoo artists, so I went down the local one in Bridgend, where we're from, and... Um, Basically, got to know Ronnie from going back and forth. It was, I don't know, we just kind of become really good friends. And I was in a band, I left that band, started jamming with Ronnie. Ronnie, the link with Shiner, the best pals. Lloyd's great, he's, uh, he's enthusiastic, full of life. You know, like, like I see a lot of myself in Lloyd, like when I was Lloyd's age. You know, just constantly taking in information. So, uh, yeah, I suppose I'm here to uh, look over him. He's an old head on a young body. He's someone I wish was kind of our age and we met him years ago. Because I think having Lloyd around me maybe 10 years ago, it could have been a completely different path. Me and Ron have known Shane since 16, 17. You know, and then me and Ron went down the rock and roll route. Shane went off and done his, his, his solo thing. And I think Shane came up, um, Shane would have run to do a, to a drum track. We had a few singers in mind and we started contacting people and then I get a phone call off Shane after seeing him a few times passing by in Bridgend. Um, can you do some drums on, uh, on a track for me? I had wrote a song uh, for my dad who recently passed away and he needed a drummer on it. So I went and saw Ronnie. Ronnie done the drums um, and then it was a case of what are you doing? He showed me a few songs. So we had, the, you know, the, the rough mixes and the rough demos up there. We showed him, and uh, he, you know, he openly said, "Oh, you know, can can I ever go with singing?" He gave me a song, and it just escalated from there. Really, one song turned into, "Oh, try these, try these other two, try those two. I think it was after about three, three songs. It was just like, Do you know, what? he's the guy. Man. I've got such a big part of my life with Shane, and he's always been a motherfucker for melody. Vocally, Shane, brilliant. You know, pitch, brilliant. No auto, no auto tune in sight, you know. He's on it, like. Got a great voice, and just fantastic musician, very talented guy. Here we are. Welcome to Rockfield. This is where we are at the minute. Ronnie's in it right now rehearsing. This is Studio One. Studio Two is in the far side. The likes of Queen and Freddie Mercury's piano. Here's I got a little bit excited, I'll be honest. Being a rock field, I, I'm still calming down. Yeah, here we are. This is where we've been staying at Rockfield. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double rooms all en suite. The history of this place around you and knowing that all the great sort of acts and bands and solo artists if you like have been through that door right there is probably the most inspirational place I've ever been. Um, you just walk up the path here and you're in the studio where Queen were 
Freddie Mercury's piano, had a little tinkle on it. This is what kept me up most on the way to a rock field. This is the piano. Freddie played on to record the human rhapsody. And you've got to pinch yourself, really, you know? That's just like rock royalty. Um, and then you hear other bands, and the owner, um, Kingsley, comes in and tells a story about um, Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath, and he's just like, what? It just feels really, really cool that I've stood in, in the same spot as legends who have wrote amazing albums, and that's, that's just something I'll take to the grave. And that live room, you know, the, the, the live room with the drums sound great, and how many great albums have been recorded here. And they're all rock albums. So we're a rock band, we go to a rock studio. Ginge is my sensei. Um, I've known Ginge, yet again, can't put a time. I saw over 10 years, walked in, he's, he's amazing. He just, from a drummer's point of view, Ginge, he just knows what's right for the song. With Ginger, with a fantastic drummer, you know, fantastic again with melody, you know, and, and, Ron, and Ron loves working with Ginger as well, as because because he's a drummer. He's been our biggest supporter, which is amazing. You know, you've got somebody like that who's done all that with his life, yet he supports you, like you know, and he's always there to help, which is it's just a fantastic asset for anybody. I really working with Patch. Um, the fact that boys know him so well, where he's come from, his experience on the road, massive albums. Patch heard the songs exactly the same vibe as Ginge, sent the demo over, um, loved it, and that's, that's even before the Shane era, like, you know? Then Shane came in, who sent that over, fuck me, that's wicked, you know, blah, blah, blah. I want to do the guitars. Yeah. I think the most important thing to me was, is, you know, Padge have been well, they on five albums. Well, I mean, so that's five albums. So that's five albums of knowledge of a producer. Padge being a guitar player. Because I, I, do, I do believe that, that. I think the person recording you needs to play the same instrument as you to a certain point because there, there seems to be a bit of a more, a bit more interaction. Plus, he's a phenomenal guitarist. So, you know, working with Shiner, it's been magical to, just to see that. Do you have a Well, some of them got different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When me and the boys get in a room together and we start practicing the songs, just thinking, when's the next gig? Can't wait to get on stage. Can't wait for people to hear what we're doing. We are a live band. I, I love being on stage and looking across and seeing Shane screaming on the mic and I just I run over to him and put my neck, like my perch, my, my head on his neck and just purely just trying to make him laugh. And he loves it. Shiner, we always make like, eye contact and we're always, we just get in the zone, go back to back, you know, jamming it out. Live, yeah, well, live is where, you know, we come from. You know, recording is always the second, you know, or almost the furthest thing away in your brain. You know, even from when we were kids, you know, just getting a shitty, tiny little fucking room, just crank everything up and you'll be fucking playing. You're deaf for about a week, like, but, you know, especially with Ron being the loudest drummer on the planet. I'm not favouring anybody in the band, but it's really nice now to look at China and go, this is fucking working, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, you got to have all that shit, all that history, and then you get a singer like Shane who can come in. His voice is fucking amazing. I'm glad being, you know, me and Ron have found, found Lloyd and Shane. Because because me and Ron have always had that that lock with the energy, but then we we seem to have found Shane and Lloyd, and they seem to just 
slot right in. I can't wait for it. I can't wait to show what we can do live. Because the energy the boys have got, when I see them rocking out, my adrenaline's pumping. So it is a strange thing. It's just like kind of a, like everything aligns. And like, oh, do you know what, boys? We set up like a band, yeah. you know, without trying, which is, but hey, but that's the way rock is made, isn't it?